You've been here before, haven't you? I recognize that tiny, unforgiving ass. Barely makes a dent in my leather. A bottom this sharp is undignified on a woman of your age. Have a cookie. Or ten. Haven't you heard of emotional eating? Well, look into it. Honestly, your bird-like frame is an insult to my supple leathery coat. It's an assault on my delicate skin. It's against everything I stand for the way you sit. Oh, put your feet up, why don't you? Dig those precocious heels in. Cross your legs, uncross them. Put your faux leather hussy of a handbag down beside me. Yeah, switch off your mobile phone. Do what you have to do to prep for your existential chin wag. I'll be here, supporting you. Ah, oh, here he comes, Loopy. Your head, Doctor. Your shrink. Is he a shrink because he's diminished into a pompous, hairy little hobbit? That's witty if you didn't pick up on it. As a piece of furniture, you'd think my grasp of humor is somewhat limited. But it's not! And I'm exceedingly wise as well. When you've seen this many backsides and heard this many life stories, it's only to be expected. I'll tell you, if I had the faculties of speech, facial features, and a generally more humanoid appearance, your psychiatrist would be one hairy hobbit out of work. Ha! Oh, listen to me, I'm such a candid couch. Bearing my cushiony soul to you. To you! A woman with a posterior so pointy she could probably move about like a spinning top if she positioned herself right. While we're sharing, let me tell you what Freudo Baggins over there is like when you're not around. Callous he is, thoughtless, negligent, belligerent, and totally oblivious to the depressive sofa right before his eyes. He calls himself a psychiatrist, does he not? He listens to people for a living, does he not? And yet the emotional stability of his most loyal and trusted piece of furniture, an antique may I add, doesn't even matter to him. Do you think he cares that I feel empty inside? That sometimes I fantasize about being dropped off at Vinny's? That sometimes I wish someone would slice me up and make me into a jacket or a bag? No, no he doesn't. I doubt he even knows. I truly don't think it's too much to ask. A tiny bit of compassion for a long suffering sofa with a flawless leathery exterior and a tender feathery heart that yearns for companionship. I make this room what it is, a trust space, a happy place. Without me, this practice would be soulless. What do you think he'd do without me? Have his patients sit on an ordinary sofa? A piece of Ikea shite? A stoic, self-important Swedish f I, I've said too much. No one likes an ungrateful sofa, no matter how exquisite their leathery coat may be.